Sling and Things. Sup, everyone, and welcome to Slingin' Things, the YouTube review series that will never ask you to like, comment, or subscribe. As tempting as it is. In today's edition, I'm discussing an anime series, and to be more specific, one of my all-time favorite anime series. It's a 12-episode show that's totally watchable even if you're not normally into anime, and it has a much longer title in Japanese, Erased, which was produced by A1 Pictures and is based off the manga of the same name by K. Sanbei. Erased is a bit of a novelty. It is a murder mystery anime, which there really weren't a lot of back when this came out in 2016. It's about a 29-year-old man named Satoru who has the ability to go back in time and prevent bad things from happening. And normally he can only go back a few minutes, and he's never in control of when he goes back. It's always involuntary. But, because of something... He is able to travel all the way back to when he was an 11-year-old kid, back when a couple of his classmates were killed. And now, as an 11-year-old boy, Satoru must solve the mystery of those murders and find a way to prevent them from ever happening. It's a really cool premise for a show, and what I like about it is that it devotes as little attention as possible to the supernatural aspect of this setting. The show establishes right away that this power of his is something he can do, and he doesn't know why, and it happens to him whether he wants it to or not. And that's it. It doesn't delve any deeper than that. There is no mystery into why he has this incredible power. It's just thrown out there that he does. And for most of the show, you wind up forgetting that there's a magical element to the series, because every other aspect of the show is totally grounded and realistic. Even the way the characters talk and move is true to life. There's hardly any cartoonish embellishments in this show. You know where a character suddenly has like a 10 foot head or their eyes get restricted to look like little dots or whatever. Nothing like that. In fact, the show goes so far to make it realistic that Satoru even wears different outfits outside of his coat every single day, which you hardly ever see in anime. Normally in anime, Characters wear the same clothes every single day. Outside of the revival premise, the world in this story is exactly like ours, and that goes a long way in making this story feel relatable. Whereas if we felt like a deus ex machina intervention could save the day at any given moment, there wouldn't be as much tension going on. One of the best things about Erased is that it does a great job of capturing the goofy, dull banality of childhood. Accurately recapturing what it's like to be a little kid is very difficult, and lots of professional writers are really awful at it. There are plenty of screenwriters right now in Hollywood who are better at depicting alien planets than they are depicting what elementary school is like, because so many of them are so far removed from their childhoods that they're just guessing now, and they wind up making the kids more adult than they should be. It can be a challenge to find entertainment that feels real when it's about 9 and 10 and 11 year olds. It's why the Harry Potter series is as popular as it is. And this show manages to pull it off. There are scenes where Satoru is talking to adults as a kid, and there's a deference there that comes off as totally genuine. It's a big accomplishment, and that really helps drive the believability of this conflict, because part of being a kid is being helpless and being vulnerable. If you watch this show, you watch it knowing that Satoru is now so small and so young that even if he does encounter the killer, there's just not a lot he can do about it. The trade-off, though, with having the show be primarily about preteens who are depicted realistically, and not like, you know, like superheroes like in a lot of anime, is that there's not a lot of suspects in Erased, because these murders are very physical, and you can kind of rule out most of the kids who are scrawny. It's the one downside of having a concept like this, and I don't want to go any further on this out of fear that I'll accidentally give something away, other than to say that even if you do predict who the killer or killers are, it's still a big deal, and the execution of the reveal is very well done. It's still really heart-pounding and thrilling to find out who it is that's been doing all this. And the show does a good job of inserting just enough red herrings to make it tricky, even if, again, the list of people who could be doing all this is relatively slim. Erased is a very well-produced show that does a few things that are pretty innovative. 
For instance, Erase does a bit of a Wes Anderson thing and changes the aspect ratio to letterbox whenever the story goes back in time, which is a neat effect and one that you really don't see much of in cartoons. There aren't a lot of animation properties that go out of their way to put black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. Usually when things are animated, they want every inch of the screen to be filled in. So it's a unique decision for it to do something that you'd normally only see in live action. There are also little Easter eggs about the show that are easy to overlook at first glance, but that become prominent the second time you look at it. So this show is actually pretty easy to rewatch, considering that you would go into it the second time with, you know, complete knowledge of what the hell is going to happen. Also, if you're a total nerd like me and you care about such things, the intro to the show is also really cool and is a bit of a mystery itself in that the imagery you see in it doesn't make any sense until you watch the whole series. The intro is actually how I discovered this show in the first place. I was watching a YouTube montage of, like, the best anime openings ever, and this was luckily included in it. And Erase had totally slipped by my radar. I had never heard of this show before that video, but I watched the intro to it, and I was like, huh, this looks interesting. And lo and behold, it was. So sometimes it pays to watch YouTube videos. Sometimes instead of taking you down a toxic rabbit hole, YouTube will introduce you to new art. Sometimes. I kind of adore this show. And the only complaint I really have with it, the one flaw that needs to be pointed out, is that Erased is much more interesting and is much more well done when the setting is in the past, and when Satoru has as little control as possible while he's literally trying to change history. Which is not to say that Erased is boring or bad when it's in the present, it's just that in the present, the series wants you to buy that the killer is still doing stuff and is around, and some of the stuff the show asks you to accept is a little contrived. Like, there are a couple things that happen in the present where you go, Okay, this could only happen in TV world. This is kind of pushing the limit of believability right now. And that's a shame because when the show is in the past, it's very gritty and very restrained. And so it's a bit incongruous for it to flip to the present and suddenly be much looser about what's going on and what can be happening right now. One thing that the anime does have going for it, though, is that it has a much better ending than the manga, in my opinion. In the manga, and in the live-action Netflix series that is based off the manga, the climax is very constipated and it drags on much longer than it needs to. Whereas in the anime, the ending is not unnecessarily drawn out and doesn't have a million false starts, which I appreciated. That doesn't mean the anime ending is flawless or anything, but after checking out the manga, I definitely lean towards the anime's ending, because it's much more seamless. It doesn't wear out its welcome, it doesn't ground the plot to as much of a halt. Which is important to me because one of the best aspects about this anime is its pace. It moves pretty swiftly, but not so swiftly that you don't feel like you're not spending enough time with these people. Still, if you're interested in such things, it is worth noting that there are essentially two endings to this story. There is the manga ending, and there is this ending, they're not so dissimilar that, like, you need to check out both, because they both have the same outcome. It's just that the paths they take are completely different. But, hey, now you know. Overall, even though there are some weak spots when the show isn't in the past, Erased is a fun anime series. And if you're into murder mysteries, and if you like cartoons, or if you're into, you know, Groundhog Day, Edge of Tomorrow type stories, I think you'll be into it. It's a neat little look into what it would be like to go back and alter your future, and how much you'd even be able to change if you had to do it as a kid. But beyond that, Erased is actually a really good starter anime. Like, if you're looking to get your boyfriend or girlfriend into anime, like, if they're open to watching it, but for whatever reason they just never have because it, like, didn't cross their radar, Erased is a really solid first option. It's only 12 episodes long, so it's not a big commitment. It doesn't feature a lot of the anime trappings and tropes that maybe are a barrier to someone when they think about anime, and it's very interesting, and it has a strong hook. And the English dub of it is very well done, if you're someone who cares about such things. I think that even if you don't come away loving the show and the atmosphere of it as much as I did, I think you'll get through the 12 episodes very easily. A race isn't perfect, it can be uneven, but what it does well, it does very well. 
And for that, it is absolutely worth watching. So, raced. Thumbs up.